Berkeley County School Board will move forward with its merger of St. Stephen Elementary and J.K. Cordine Elementary. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with Berkeley County School Board member Yvonne Bradley for her reaction to this news for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Yvonne Bradley, welcome to Quentin's Close-Ups. Good morning and thank you for the invitation. Oh, I appreciate it greatly. Needless to say, you are a member of the Berkeley County School Board. And as you know, uh, the community is still, you know, upset about the decision that would ha that happened last night at the Berkeley County School Board. Yeah. Let me take you back. Berkeley. To yes, ma'am. And I, I want to go back to the article from WCBD Channel 2. It says this. When the school year begins in August, students at a northern Berkeley County elementary school will attend a different school. At a Monday night Berkeley County School Board meeting, Community committee members, that is, decided to proceed on the merger with St. Stephen Elementary School. Initially, the board voted to close J.K. Gordine and move students to St. Stephen in an effort to save the district $1.5 million when they passed the county school budget in June. During the public por comment portion of the meeting, as you know, parents, teachers, and others shared their concerns about the merger and the timing of the board's decision to announce it. As we right. say right now, Ms. Uh, Ms. Yvonne, where are you emotionally with this? Um, at the meeting last night, when the decision was again finalized, I'm devastated. They did not even really take into account the information that was shared with them from the ministerial alliance, from uh, residents, from the citizens. They did not take that into account. They didn't even ask me what my thoughts were on the situation. Um, again, transparency is so important. They were not transparent with this forthcoming. So last night's decision to me was a kick in the face. Um, they're not listening to the constituents across all of Berkeley County, not just um, Hanahan and, and Goose Creek and those areas, but out in the rural unincorporated areas. We matter. We care. We are concerned. We're stakeholders. Our children, our four parents, us, we're concerned. Keep us in the loop. That's all. Just keep us in the loop. And for you to backdoor us, backdoor me, didn't say anything. How do I respond to the people in my area? Even last night, I didn't get a chance to respond and they were wondering why. So I'll kind of clarify that too. That came out of the budget meeting. So it was in finance and human resources. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to speak, it had to come out. Dr. Crystal Wakefall made a motion that it come out and we right. have discussion. Sure. There was no second. Mr. Ramsey, Normus Walford gave a second. So, of course, you know, Robert's rule of order said the right. motion is dead. So that's where it was. People were upset and I understand why. I, I wholeheartedly agree. We were not treated fairly. We were not. And it, it's, it's funny in that everybody says we're always the last. And that's true. I kind of see that now. I want us to remember we're first. In the sight of God, we're first. And we want God to take care of the situation. So we're going to keep our ministers in prayer. And they're going to keep us in prayer as well. But I was totally devastated last night. Totally devastated. Yes. And, uh, incidentally, Ms. Yvonne, I've tried several times to interview Michael Ramsey for point this close up on uh, several topics related to the Berkeley County School Board. Have not gotten, have not received the word back from them as well, and of course I. And you won't. You won't. And, and, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh no, no, you're fine. You're perfectly fine. I just want to get the information out to the people, and I, I've tried several times to interview the current superintendent, but every time I sit down to do an interview or, or get prepared for the interview, they tell me he's not available or he has, as a, an emergency has come up, so he can't do the interview. So I hope to get him back on Quintus, get him on Quintus close up. That is to get his side of the story. But let me ask you this, Mr. Bond. What critical information that they're that they're actually withholding from the people and you guys on the school board right now? To be honest, critical information. What's going to happen with the building? The the children and the the principal and the staff may not be there, so there's a vacant building. What's happening to the building? Um, the comment was made they can rent it anytime the community can. That, to me, is also another slap in the face. The community has been so instrumental in keeping the building going. Um, the Dad's Club has put in playground equipment. Now to hear them say it has to be rented back to the community.
The school is about to celebrate 100 years in existence. What that will look like, I have no idea. We're hearing things out in the community. We're hearing it will be a training center for Volvo and Boeing. We're hearing that Roper Berkeley and some of the other uh, organizations like Berkeley County government will come in and use the building for outreach community services. However, all that would have been great, still is great, had they shared it in advance of coming up with this merging JK and, and, and St. Stephen Elementary. Why didn't they decide to, why, why didn't they hold off on this until 2025, 2026, Ms. Yvonne? Now that's the question of the day. I don't know. The urgency is there. I don't know if outside backing or push from the outside, whoever the powers may be, want this done now. Please keep in mind that property is being sold at a record rate in the Pinevals, Berkeley County area, coming from all directions. So somebody wants to make another dollar on Berkeley County school system, as well as the students and residents of this end of Berkeley County. Now, Powers, go ahead. I hear oh, you no. got a question. Oh, oh no, 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 you go for it. <laughs> the powers that be need to realize money is not the end to all. You, you can't have your money and be happy with it. Money is good. It does a lot of wonderful things. Why not allow J.K. Gordine to stay open one more year for that transition period, as was asked, and then go into those things that you want to do. Everybody wants to know firsthand information. Wouldn't you, as a reporter, as an interviewer, firsthand is better than secondhand because it changes in the flow. So if they came to the community and said, look, community, we love you. We appreciate everything that has been said and done. However, we now need to look forward and do some other things. This is what we would like to do. I don't think the community would have been so much in an uproar had they come to us in the beginning. Treat us like the stakeholders we are. That's it. If you want to make money, fine. We understand um, commerce. We understand economics. However, we are stakeholders. We have a part in this. Everybody says on our tax bill, school taxes are there. So we're paying for it. So treat us like the constituents we are. Love us enough to let us do a little bit. Sure, we're going to get upset. Sure, we're going to be mad. But if you come to me up front, Mr. Washington and say, Ms. Bradley, I don't think that dress is appropriate for you today. You need to go home and change that. You say that to me. I look at it. Hey, you might be right. Let me go back and evaluate. But you didn't give me the opportunity. You just went all around me and talked about me. You didn't come to me directly. Everything is more direct. You and I come from the same type of background. My mom and dad, like your mom and dad and grandparents, came directly to you. This is what I want you to do. One, two, three, four, A, B, C. Come directly to those who have a stake in it. And that's all. I, I always um, applaud our superintendent because he hired me back in 2011 when I didn't have a job. I will always be respectful of Dr. Dixon. However, I think in this situation, he is losing the respect not only of me as a board member, but other members of the board. He is losing the respect of the community in which he had his first job because he said Dr. Norton at St. Stephen Elementary hired him. Okay, special ed teacher. So he's losing the um, confidence we had in him, you know? So therefore, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. I'm not privy to it because I wasn't privy to this decision in this budget. So I, I, I have a lot to say. I, I don't want to burden everybody, but now is the time. We have to get people involved. We have to get voter registration and then get those people out to vote. Just don't register, but get them out to vote. We got to have a plan. And as one councilman said, work your plan. Have a plan and then work your plan. So that's what we need to do now. Galvanize, make sure everybody's on the same page and we're doing the right thing in the sight of God as well and making sure our children are taken care of. Ms. Bradley, let me ask you this. 
Is Dr. Dixon in control of this situation or is an outside source or the actual school board, those other members who voted for this, are they really in control of the situation? I don't have any proof. I don't have any evidence. But from what I can see, I don't think Dr. Dixon does have a handle on what's going on. I think the majority of the school board members are dictating um, his direction. I think his cabinet has a lot to do with it as well. If they are the people they say they are, um, they're also lacking in what they're doing. So yes, I do think there's an outside source. Yes, I think the majority of the school board members does not have his best interests at heart. And yes, I think um, outside sources are dictating what we're doing. And being a three minority board member members, we, we're at a loss. So we need to figure out how to, as they say, flip the board. We, we got to figure that out. We, we really do. Ms. Yvonne, in this particular situation with obviously the merger now between St. Stephen's and J.K. Cordine, when exactly did they have the meeting before the meeting? Now, I would tell you a lie if I gave you uh, June 30th. I have no idea. They did not contact me. Um, when asked, uh, one board member, Mr. Baker, said he talked with someone in the community. Actually, that was June 17th, he called. I believe it was. He spoke to Dr. Prello, who's the principal of J.K. Gordon. That was the first and only time he's talked to anybody out there. Ms. Littleton says she's had conversations with different people. She did not name those individuals. So, again, I can't tell you who they were. I can't tell you when they met. But they disrespected board member that represents District 7. They didn't say anything. They didn't have one conversation with me. All I heard was at the board meeting, the, the budget meeting, right. when the question was asked. That, that's the first. Now, somebody's saying I should have known. Well, Mr. Washington, you know. My grandmama said, if you're not invited to the party, don't you go. Nobody called and invited me. Nobody told me they were having a meeting because the rules, the, the bylaws say if you meet with two or more, that's a meeting. You need to notify the public. And so whether they did it by phone, whether they did it at the barbecue in the backyard, I can't give you a day and a time. I can't tell you who called the meeting, but I know there was a meeting before the meeting at the Berkeley County School Board building. Yep, go ahead. Why don't, didn't they have a town hall meeting to discuss this? I know I'm being redundant, but why not a town hall meeting versus these particular actions that they've taken previously in regards to this? The town hall meeting was, take, was done after the 4-2 vote. Okay, the town hall meeting. That's when the superintendent and his cabinet came out and tried to have a conversation with the community. At that point, it was basically too late. Um, in the sense that it was after the fact. Um, and then we did breakout sessions where, you know, you went in different rooms and you talked. Um, and then um, people were informed. They were thinking they were coming back and having an engaging conversation with the superintendent. It did not happen. They only wanted to know when, where, why. The specifics, the logistics. How's it going to work? What is going to look like? What's the school bus route going to be? And then somebody has the, well, the superintendent says, now we're going to ask for prayer and we thank you for coming. You talk about some fired up country folks. They were fired up and ready to go. And it did not end well. He heard an arm. He heard a lot. Yes, ma'am. But he still did not address the issue. He has said absolutely nothing. Nothing about it. He says, I'm at the liberty of the board. He's right. So if the board members, the majority said, don't talk, he doesn't talk. So what do you call that? In my world, we call that a puppet. Somebody's pulling the strings. And you asked that question earlier. I'm being forthright and honest. I, I believe now he is the absolute Pinocchio. He's being directed by some outside forces. And again, who they are. God knows, but they know, too, what's going on. And I want to get back to that in just a second, Mr. Bond. But let me ask you this. When it, when it comes to J.K. Cordine, 
Was the mm-hmm. attendance was the attendance number low at JK Cordine because the district approved children at in the JK zone to attend St. St. Stephen's, which would ultimately which would be the ultimate goal to weaken JK in your mind? I heard that. I, I'm not one of those statisticians, but I did hear that there are children who are at St. Stephen Elementary that technically should have been at JK. Mm. I've also heard that the principal at St. Stephen Elementary sent children to JK. Look, you're supposed to be over there. Go over there. Mm. And they were not received. I don't know how true those stories are, but the numbers are low at JK. On the positive side, yes, ma'am. you get to have small classroom numbers. You get to have a one-on-one rapport with the child that needs that special help, that extra help at JK versus may not get it quite so well at St. Stephen Elementary. I love our teachers. They do a magnificent job at both schools, both schools. However, with 20 kids in a class versus 25, 30, you can't do as much. And our teachers will work their fingers to the bone trying to bring those students who are so far below up to par. Every school has the same opportunity. Teachers teach differently. And I applaud them for doing what they do again. However, Johnny over here needs more than five minutes of special help. He may need 10, but I've got 15 others over here who's raising cane because we want to move on. Well, that teacher takes into heart to consideration. Well, Johnny needs my help. Can I get you to do something else while he's working? We're working together. Those teachers, I applaud. I am prayerful that the numbers at JK that will go over to St. Stephen Elementary will not be overwhelming to the teachers there. I, I hope and pray that the teachers where those children are going will have the t- opportunity to give them the services they need, the help they need, the assistance they need to bring them up to par. Everybody keeps saying they're below average, this, that, and the other. Well, that's an individual assumption. As a school overall, it may appear that they are lower compared to other elementary schools. However, I've heard that some of those students are very well, doing very well, reading on grade level. Of course, there are a few that are not doing what they're supposed to do. However, now is the time. I'm going to give Miss e- Dr. Norton, Dr. Graham, the opportunity and her staff a pat on the back. They, they have big shoes to fill because now we're going to look to them to raise those students up who, who, who uh, one former board member said last night that they're below from 23 to 50. So that's a big task for those teachers at St. Stephen Elementary now to fill those shoes, to do what um, the former board member is asking them to do. Okay, so Ms. Yvonne, let me ask you this then. How many of those students from J.K. Cordai are actually going to go to St. Stephen's this fall? Now, I don't have a number. I pray that they all do. But I've heard parents talk about moving their children to other schools. Okay? They have that option if there is availability. Okay. Um, If you live in this area, District 7, and you want to go to another school in District 7, you have to get permission from the board. Um, I'm not too too fond of children leaving JK, supposed to go to St. Stephen, now they want to go to Bonner. I, I'm not a fan of that. Um, I prefer that the zoning, the attendance zone lines, be accepted and you stay there. Prove them wrong. Let your child stay at St. Stephen Elementary and help them to grow. Don't just move them because you're upset now. Stay at St. Stephen Elementary where you're zoned for, where JK is now going, and help your child to grow. Go over and talk to Dr. Graham. um, Build a relationship with her. Build a relationship with the teacher that your child is going to, classroom your child is going to be in, and prove them wrong that the children at JK are just as smart as any other child in Berkeley County. And I remember many years, well, back in the early 90s, when I wanted to switch schools here in Charleston County, I had to go in front of the constituent school board to get permission to do that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But let me ask you this, Ms. Bradley. Now, do you know how many, yeah, do you know how many teachers will actually be transferred from J.K. Cordine to St. Stephen's? Now, the understanding I got is that every teacher 
at JK will go over to St. Stephen Elementary. Mm -hmm. Instead of having um, one teacher teach fourth and fifth grade, yeah. that teacher will now either do fourth grade or fifth grade. And she will have other team members already there to work with. So the thinking is that now we have a team of five teachers teaching fifth grade. So we can spread that out and again, um, even out the numbers so that everyone is not overwhelmed. And I hope that in true, I, I pray that it works that way, that there is team versus individuals now. So yes, I want everybody to go to J, uh, everyone from JK to go to St. Stephen Elementary. I want every teacher at J, uh, I keep saying JK, St. Stephen Elementary to do a bang up job. I want every child to realize their potential and help Berkeley County School District grow in those test scores that they're talking about. SC ready. Oh, yeah. Um, any basic skills test that they're required to take. I hope they excel. That is my goal. That is my wish. That is my desire. But they need the urging and the pushing and the backing of the teachers and the faculty and staff at JK, uh, St. Stephen <laughs> Elementary School. <laughs> I understand that. I love worry. JK. It's a yes. small school. Yeah. It has everything you would want your child to have. It has it. St. Stephen Elementary, yes, it's a bigger school. It has a larger school population. However, now we're going to pray. We, we know Dr. Graham is, doing one, is going to do a wonderful job. She's going to reach out to those parents and welcome them with open arms as well as those students. So um, it's, it's, it's all in their hands now. I will be there on August 14th when those kids walk into St. Stephen Elementary and say good morning to them and and wish them a good day and a good year. But we're we're planning good things. We're praying good things on them. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to te test scores, Ms. Bradley, what's the biggest difference between J.K. Cordai and St. Stephen? Um, I don't know what the biggest difference is, other than numbers. Others, other than um, at each grade level, there are. A smaller number of children taking that particular test at JK than at St. Stephen Elementary. So the average would be a little different because of the number of students taking a particular test. Um, other than that, when you put them apples to apples, the numbers, yes, JK's numbers are lower, but individually, the school itself is doing well. It's doing well. Now, I'm not saying they're perfect, don't get me wrong, but they are doing well. I, 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 this might be a silly question, Ms. Bradley, but will there be more substitute teachers than actual certified teachers when these kids go over to St. Stephen? There shouldn't be. If they are not certified before they left JK, they will be teacher assistants, classroom helpers, and those kinds of things. Depending on what they did at JK, that will also carry over to St. Stephen Elementary. If you're a classroom certified teacher, um, you will do the same thing at St. Stephen Elementary. I can't see them doing anything less. Unless you're a retiree, um, then you have an option. Yes. Depending on the need of the school, you have an option. But I think everyone that is a certified classroom teacher at JK, from what I was told, will go over to St. Stephen Elementary in that grade level with those teachers and they will do a um, magnificent job. Yes, ma'am. And I, I, I wanted to ask you this too, but uh, so what, what other resources, that, that's why I wanted to ask you, what other resources will the kids from J.K. Gordon have over at St. Stephen's? Um, now you're asking a good question. Mental health services, social workers, um, all those things are available at St. Stephen Elementary, and I was told they're available also at JK. However, the way it's done or the services are given may be a little different at JK versus St. Stephen Elementary. Everything that the principal wants at JK, there is a request. And then whatever is needed, from what I understand, is sent, done at JK. Now, I did hear that one parent had children at JK. Mental health services were needed, but because the parent had a child at St. Stephen Elementary, 
They were told to move the child from JK, not move them, but pick them up, take them over to St. Stephen Elementary, receive that service, and then bring them back. Now, that's a handful. Now, that's a handful for a parent to do that in the middle of the day. If they're not working, that could be done. If they have grandparents who stay at home, that could be done. But more effectively, if the mental health counselor comes to both schools. And we are at a loss right now for mental health counselors. I think we're, we don't have one per school. I could be wrong, um, but I will check that and see if we have mental health counselors per school. Mm, then JK has its own and St. Stephen Elementary has their own. We wouldn't have to transfer students across the highway to get services. Speaking of so I'm not sure. Not Go sure. ahead. Oh, no worries. And, and Ms. Yvonne, I want to actually just speaking of transportation. Has the district actually figured out how early these young children will be on the bus with the middle school students? I have heard no logistical information. I hear in the streets, mm -hmm. the streets are talking, that school would start an hour later. That, mean, ugh, that means the high school hours would be a little bit different or the bus drivers would be nonstop on the road. Logistically, I have not heard how... Um, Somebody said that it'll all be the same. There'll be no changes. Middle school and elementary school students would ride the same bus. Um, I don't know yet. I have not heard the logistics being worked out. I do know the transportation department director is at a conference. So has that been settled as far as bus routes, bus times? I can't give you an answer. I can't. Again, remember. Yes, ma'am. We have not been informed as to logistically how it's going to be done. So I don't want to sit here and give you the right. wrong information. Right, 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 right. Bradley said, no, I have not been given any logistical information. Uh, do you believe these teachers at JK Cordine will be only going to St. Stephen's uh, this, uh, well, this upcoming school term only? I hesitate because. Teachers can be moved at any time, depending on the need of the district. So I don't know. I pray that if they are a non-seasoned teacher, they have less than 20 years experience, that they stay. Those that have 20 plus years, they, they have a decision. Do we want to stay another year? Can I stay another year? And they will look at the numbers of students at a school. And it will also look at the need of the school. Because if the numbers are not there, then we don't need that teacher. Then they'll be moved to another school. You have a job, but you'll be moved. And there's that possibility if you're moved, it could be further out. I, obviously, I, I live in Charleston County near the Dorchester County line. But when it comes uh -huh. to Berkeley County, we know that Berkeley County is growing rapidly. What is the district plan, district's plan, that is, as far as growing the area and adding no, new schools, building new schools? Well, there is um, on board now to build a new school on Black Tom Road, to build a new school in the Nexton community. Sure. One, one community member asked last night about Clements Ferry Road, Road. Um, a new subdivision coming in with three schools. So I don't know who's building those three schools over there, but I have not heard of Berkeley County building new schools over there yet. However, there are some developers that come in and do build schools and or at least donate the property to the school district for buildings. Um, I, 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 I don't I have not heard other than the two we already know about. Right. I have not heard of any more. Now, there was a conversation about purchasing property on Clements Ferry Road. Maybe that's what they wanted to do. But again, if it's in a subdivision, you got to be careful. Those developers are very finicky when it comes to their property, um, donating it to a school district. Somebody has to do the infrastructure, the roads, the drainage, um, clearing of the property, those kinds of things. I, I haven't heard anything. Again, we just lost the, um, the facilities person or the capital projects gentleman. Right. So the deputy superintendent is now in charge of facilities. 
So maybe we'll hear something at the next board meeting about the update on the two schools that they are already talking about and possibly the three schools that's coming on Clements Ferry that this um, community member talked about the other night. And Ms. Bradley, I, I, I hope I'm not getting ahead of myself, but uh, isn't the, the current uh, chief financial officer for the Berkeley County School District, isn't that person going to a different county? Um, chief financial officer? I believe so, that's yes, ma'am. I didn't hear that one now. Okay, okay. That now that's Marcy Abramson. Right. I didn't. I didn't hear that she was okay. leaving. Okay. Is that what you heard? I mean, I, I believe it was somebody else that's moving to a different county. I'm so sorry about that. Davis is moving. He went to Dorchester right. County. Right. Um, as their facilities or capital improvement or capital projects person. Other than that, I hadn't heard about anybody else leaving. Now, now, with that capital improvements uh, position, will you all bring that up as an item on the, the next uh, school board meeting's agenda? Um, I'm hesitating because the district advertises those positions. The district will do the hiring, and then that person will come before the board and be introduced and presented as the new capital projects director. Right now, as I said, the deputy superintendent is in charge of capital projects. And the committee, um, Joe Baker, Jimmy right. Henson, and I are part of the capital projects committee. I hadn't heard anything. And again, those two, those, the three of us should be involved. However, will I be? I don't think so. I don't know. I would love to be in, involved in the hiring, the interviewing process with the new facilities person, but I can't tell you I will. Going back to that budget, Ms. Bradley, I know when they had the budget meeting and they discussed obviously this merger at that particular time, where in America can a public school be completely eliminated in a budget meeting as if it was a pro actual project? Now, that is being looked at by um, our state representatives um, to find out if that's an actual thing that can be done. Um, schools schools can make decisions or sure. school boards can make those decisions to close a school based on the criteria they set forth. Um, our state attorney general will probably be asked on his opinion on that. And again, it's just his opinion. Right. Um, but again, I don't know of any place. And then with JK being a Title I school, maybe there are some certain requirements that Title I schools go through that. Other schools don't have to go through because of their notation of being a Title I school. All those things are being looked at. So there's possibly some lawsuits in the, in the making if these things did not occur according to um, rules and regulations. Now, I understand Mr. Bender, who's an attorney, said they probably violated FOIA um, in doing so. So we'll have to look into that as well. And quickly, going back to St. Stephen's, Ms. Siobhan, what is the current condition that is of St. Stephen Elementary? When you mean the condition, what do you mean? The school oh, I facilities should, I should, itself? Yes, ma'am. I should say that. I'm sorry. Put some context in there. Yes, ma'am. Um, the last time I was there, which was maybe May, June, it, I, it looks nice. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's a school. It has playground. They just did, I think, the roof not too long ago. Okay. Um, there are some other things being done there to kind of spruce up the place a little bit, but, um, it's, it's, it's a good facility, not as old as JK because each school has had some renovations over the years. Sure. So, um, it looks nice. I, I I'm not going to say any of our schools are dirty looking. Right, right. They're all nice. They're all good schools. Sure. They're all, sure. the buildings are kept. Our custodians do a good job. Um, some better than others, of course, of keeping up the facilities. Now, what about the five safety inspections? What about the building inspection? Because I read in my recent research that the last inspection was done for that particular school back in 2013. Yeah, um, one of the parents came up with that information, and we'll have to look into that. Um, has it been shared with the administration? I don't know, but I think the fire department went out and did a visit with St. Stephen Elementary and said, as you just said, it had not been inspected since 2013 or 2020. So 
2013, that that's not good. That's not good. That says our facilities department is not doing a very good job of keeping up with those safety things. They just pull a sticker off, put a sticker on. That's not good. <laughs> Excuse me. That's not good at all. So our buildings need to be inspected. I think last night we talked about security cameras. Sure. We got over 5,000 security cameras across the district. Again, with those cameras, they need to be updated on a regular basis and they need to be placed strategically for safety purposes, um, especially out in the rural areas. We've got a lot of woods and trees and stuff and people can sneak behind, but the facilities, every facility that I've been to, the custodians have kept the building very nicely, very nicely. And that's very, that's I'm proud of our custodials, custodians at every school. Yes, thank God for them as well. Well, Ms. Yvonne Bradley of the Berkeley County School Board, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Quintin's Close Ups. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful day. Likewise.